Ooh, all right. Welcome to tonight's meeting. Um, so tonight um, we'll be looking at Kiwi and how we can use Kiwi to develop Python applications for Android. So, I mean, Kiwi's uh, mantra is write it basically once and then run it on multiple platforms, not only the, the usual suspects of Linux, Mac, and Windows, but also on Android. And they do have, um, um, they developed a tool a while ago called Python for Android um, that is actually being used underneath the hood um, for the tool that we're using for generating um, apps out of Kiwi. So that's called Python for Android. And as you can see, it has the Kiwi um, under the Kiwi um, organization here. So yeah, sort of like a low level um, tool. Um, and it has certain recipes for converting. Um, so it's no problem having pure Python modules, but it also has um, support or what they call recipes for others, uh, popular dependencies like uh, NumPy and SQL Alchemy. Um, and apparently you can also write your own um, recipes for that. So if you have a particular library that you need, you could then in theory, if you're probably savvy enough and convert that as well. All right. So one disadvantage is it takes sometimes a long time because it downloads a lot of stuff. So um, I've run that already in one environment earlier today. And um, it ends up like with over a gig that it actually pulled down. So we'll see. Um, maybe we can go through and uh, run it. And um, while it's downloading it, we can answer questions. <laughs> but yeah, we'll see. Cool. So first of all, um, since we're developing for um, Android, um, Kiwi basically gets converted into um, Java, I believe, or something along those lines. Um, I don't know too much about the, the um, underpinnings there, but I'll just, um, we'll just, we can look into that afterwards. Um, so there's a few libraries that you definitely need installed in order to get that going. I installed that, that's easy enough. Um, and then you can also then install in your home directory um, a few other tools like test resources, setup tools and virtual env, um, which I've already done, so I won't do anything about that. So that's all the latest. And I can create basically a virtual environment, kvvenv, um, and then oops, I'll activate that one. I'll just make the font a bit larger so you can actually see something. Okay, right. Now we just need to grab our Kiwi packages and the examples itself, since we want to um, try and build a package from the examples. It's done. So if we have a look, so we're going to try out the touch tracer example. So we're just going to have a quick look. So there's, um, have a look at the main, oops. Um, so it uses Kiwi. There's some points that it does. It uses a float layout. So personally, I don't know too much about Kiwi. It's always something I thought I should maybe have a look at. But in the end, I quite often just stick to a GTK. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the interesting thing, I'm not sure about GTK, but the interesting thing about um, the Kiwi framework is that it has support for multi-touch. Something you'd probably want to have if you're on Android, um, having like gestures, um, like pinch zooming in and out and things like that. Okay, so if we run, for instance, that main file, then a screen pops up here uh, with 
not too much on there. But if I press the left mouse button, um, you can see that it's tracing basically where I have pressed. Um, if I do a right click, then it stays. And left click always disappears. And I can also do a middle mouse button. That's mouse four, apparently, interesting enough. And cool. Pressing escape disappears again. <clears throat> so you can see it does a few other things in the background here. So it uses OpenGL for drawing um, using SDL2. Um, has shading in there. And Apparently, virtual keyboard not allowed. Yeah, and reads inputs from here. And yeah, so then it's the same thing as the main loop. And yeah, unable to open. Hmm, interesting. Right, so works fine on my Linux box. Um, now, the main thing is really um, we actually want to try that and turn that into a proper Android application. So we'll just um, copy things around into a new directory. Um, so yep, we have that basically all in there. Just testing whether we can actually run things from there. Just making sure. Yep. So it works excellent now and there's this tool that sits on top of um, and uh, Python for Android and that's called Buildozer. typical um, let's try and come up with a funny name um, and it um, from the amount of data that it downloads and how much it actually sort of like uses your CPU, then it's definitely a bulldozer. Um, so from that point of view, it's it's very well aptly named. But we'll just go through. So it basically needs um, Cython um, in its um, virtual environment. Let that install, and we'll install the, the bulldozer. Done too. And then we basically um, generate a, a spec file for Bulldozer, which we then tweak a little bit. Cool. So if we look at that, we can see oh, ah yeah, my application, the package name, domain, and other things, um, all kinds of things in there. Um, We'll just um, we'll just open that up. Um, right. So Ian was suggesting to just change sort of like these three um, properties in that file. So title I'm gonna call it touch tracer. And then we package name, just touch tracer, and then orientation. Oops. We want it for all, not just portrait. Cool, oh, that's it. After that, we can basically build things. Fingers crossed that this is a little bit faster. So it does a lot of um, cloning and whatnot. So it clones Python for Android in there, um, pulls in um, all kinds of other things. Thankfully, I've already pulled them in, so it doesn't do everything. Um, <clears throat> still a few bits to download. So if you guys have any questions, please interrupt me. So since I'm sharing my desktop, I can't really see what's happening in the chat. So um, just pipe in with audio. Or if uh, someone else who is actually watching the chat, if they could let me know, that'll be great. 
All right, so that actually is using Kiwi 2.0. That's the latest uh, according to Ian. And here you can see building recipes. Um, and it's doing it for ARM. Um, in the meantime, I just have to uninstall the app on my phone here. Yeah, I'll um, just uh, mention, Peter, that yep. um, I, if you um, if you use Ubuntu, yep. then for example, 20.04, then you bring in, um, you can install uh, Kivi and you can install Builddozer, but they're sort of down rev. I think they're one point, Kivi's at 1.8 or something mm. like that. So the old ones. new version of 2.0, um, that's mm. why we, if we use a virtual environment and pip them, then, yeah. Um, yeah. then we get uh, the, the latest versions of. of yeah. yeah, at least the good thing is so, um, uh, where was it? So um, it does um, basically create, it's a little bit hard to see, um, sort of like within that directory touch tracer that we created, it creates a subdirectory bulldozer where it actually downloads all kinds of things. Um, but um, certain other things which are generic between builds, it actually installs under your home directory in the bulldozer directory. So, um, and Android SDK and NDK won't be downloaded each time when you do um, such a project, but it still will basically create quite a few things in there. Yeah, on, on the system I had, the first time I think it was about 30 minutes to install something, and then the next time it dropped down to about 10. Oh, so, okay, yeah. So, yeah, yeah in other words, you know, mm. 20 minutes of um, stuff is already installed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. still yeah. downloaded, yeah. yeah. But that, that dot .buildozer file that'll be in your, created in your, um, in the working directory you've got now, yeah. it, it, it must contain quite a ma massive amount of it does. files and data. Yeah. It does. Yeah. I think when I checked, it was uh, 1.4 gigs. So at the moment, we had 800. Uh, I mean, it's all the build files and everything, but if I... Um, look in my home directory, I have 4.1 gigs already in there. Yeah. So, I mean, okay. Android is definitely chewing through disk space. So that's just the way it is. All the various images that you're trying to sort of like build for and whatever your, um, I mean, API that you're building against, um, that's just simply the way it is. Yeah, and you can also see down here my CPU on a quad core really goes a bit nuts. And I can definitely hear the fan. I'm not sure whether, it's, whether the microphone is picking up on that as well. No, I can't hear the fan, but I can definitely see your CPU yeah. is maxing it. Yeah. yeah. So it, it helps having an SSD plus a faster CPU on it. Mm. Yes, CPU is died off now. Oh, you downloaded Yeah, it. some things are just single CPU. Unfortunately, not everything's been parallel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's the main thing with any builds. Um, you have to have a fresh cup of tea and something to read, usually. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess you can preempt people by saying that um, what it does build will be placed in the <laughs> slash bin file folder. Yes. It will create in in uh, the working directory. You got be too much longer. That's still siphon there. Yeah. I like this failed as expected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. On the first, the first time you run it, it, it will fail, but yeah. it's normal. Yeah. yeah, don't ask. I think that it miss, that same message comes up about three times. Yeah, it came up already at least a second time. Yeah. I don't know whether there's something funny with, with the compilation that it needs to 
built something and it needs something more and then try it again. <laughs> Eventually it will work. All right. I always find it funny here with the counts and so many more. And this sort of like just jumps around, goes up and down all the time. I'm yeah. not quite sure what that's about. See, it's using Scython with a capital C. And, yeah. And that was pipped. So that came off the, the Python Pi yep. index or yeah. whatever. It doesn't matter yeah. whether you use low or uppercase. Oh, okay. But the, um, um, what was I going to say? The, the, if you bring in the Scython off the Ubuntu repository, yeah. then um, it, it, the Scython, I think, that's on there is version 2 of Python or something. Um, mm -hmm. And okay. and uh, it doesn't, anyway, you get an error message when you try running that one and you have to actually um, mm -hmm. reassign, I don't know, so that... Oh, within Python, there's Python 3. Yeah, that kind mm -hmm. of a thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So... Oh. But the Scython thing seems to get it right. The one that comes in from the... Um, okay. uh, from PyPy. PyPy, yeah. Pi here. Yeah. Yep. I was compiling something. Now it's something in Android. All right. Yeah, it picked mm. up. See, it's putting that um, E A B I V seven A. Yeah, I think um, that's the thirty two bit. Yeah, yeah. I, think so I don't know. How... Cool, we're done. No, no, it's a little bit slow in this Gradle thing. It's got to load that in. So, so it's done now. Yeah. Oh, done okay. that, so oh, available in the bin directory. So if we. Yeah, so we now have an APK. And if we go back on our notes, um, we can now deploy that. Cool. All right. And I'm going to... Oh, well. What was it again? Uh, screen copy. Uh, minus M space... 1024. Ah, oh, okay. Right. Cool, okay. Sorry. Let's try that again. Right. Cool. So we can now see, oh, there's our touch tracer. And I can now use my finger to draw something, or I can use two fingers, or three fingers, four fingers. Five is going to be tricky now. <laughs> it's not going to be great when I'm drawing here, but yeah. So, yeah, so it definitely works. And then if I um, do rotating, Then it also does it, yeah, or I can draw with my mouse as well. Right clicking closes it, okay. <laughs> cool, so that was that. So, in other words, it actually does work with an example there, not that we've written our own application, um, but with a simple application here, yeah, that did work. So, um, Ian, I'll send some through. Um, that was this one, the Kiwi, la Kiwi launcher. So that only came through before the meeting. I didn't have a time, chance to look at that properly. Um, okay. That was the touch to right? Okay. So, does anybody have questions? Huh? We're going to look at the COVID pass verify after the presentation. For that, Angus. Um, cool. Okay. The, the website 
for Kivi, kivi.org. Yep. It has a gallery with various ideas on it. Oh, look. So I've seen... Um, yep, these are all sort of like things they were done with it. Question is with what versions of it, but yeah. One thing business process modeling, not bad. That seems to be done a um, company games where you use uh, multi touch. Um, two of them. So you go up. There was the Snoo photo manager. Ah, not the one. This one. So the latest release was February this year. Um, I'm not sure. If I didn't try actually installing. We could have a look. What's there? Well, that's an APK. We could actually um, try and actually install it. See what that's like. Was it ADB deploy? Right, so we do have a new photo manager installed. Let's have a look what it does. Yes, allow that. Um, okay. In terms of settings. Close things. Okay. Um, Import. Um, import from. You must set up a database before. Okay. Uh, uh, database options. New. Okay. I kind of create a. New database. Hmm. I'm always looking. Hmm. Ah, good question. Exit. Close up. Um, Countries can do clean. We don't really 
have a database yet. From that point of view, I can't really do anything there. Um, oh well, um, I guess I'll leave that at that. Um, let's try something else. Any suggestions what to go through? All right, um, maybe we'll try that later. Um, let's see whether we can, um, let's close that again. We can get the Kiwi launcher going. So, um, So that Kiwi launcher is apparently a project to make it easier to launch Python projects immediately on your phone so you don't actually have to create apps first. So um, so we'll see whether we can get going. <clears throat> Okay, right. Okay, we are giving. Yep, all right. We get Kiwi launcher. Go on the track. That's all there. <clears throat> oh, can we launch a line? What's there? Okay, we have our build of the spec file again. Okay. So Have a look there. Oh, yeah. Give me a version. This is fair two point oh. I'm gonna use that. Yeah, I I don't know whether it's essential to change that, but um, it, it seems to make sense to change it. But I, I think I think I did. Yeah, it's probably just without that one, changing. Yeah. I think it pulls it in, so um, I mean that at least was the Kiwi version it was built against. But I mean, we'll see whether it works. So um, that's probably that they developed with, but that's all right. Cool. And then so that was the Python version was already three. Um, Android Arch. That's that. Cool. All right. That, that was yep. more just a note or a comment yeah. to, to show that it's definitely version mm -hmm. three, etc. Yeah. That's okay. So we'll just do a build. At least it won't have to download as much. But once again, it's cloning sort of like um, Python Android inside that particular um, directory. I wonder if I 
Now, Pete, if you only wish to develop for one particular platform as opposed to producing yeah. two or three uh, equivalent systems for different yeah. platforms, can yeah. you actually tell Kivi only to produce one and save a little bit of processing time? Um, I think it's with Android, you actually have to do this APK generation. Um, first, you actually only have to have Kivi dependency in your virtual environment and just runs. So you wouldn't actually have to build anything in that as I know. You can do executable packages as well, but I'm pretty sure you can just run it as is. Because what I've done earlier when I just did a Python main die, um, when I called basically in that um, environment, so I didn't actually compile anything initially. So when I was when I'm here, the um, um, and it's also if, if I just run, oops, uh, on that one. Um, So if I just run Python main, then I basically get that. So it's basically just the usual uh, interpreted PyCode, and you don't need to compile anything in that sense. It is quite possible that you can um, um, generate like binaries for the problems, but let's have a look. So you can have Pi installer. Um, okay. All right, so to be able to add that one. I have to do a bit. Not quite sure what really needs to be in there. So it does some things here, um, some dependencies and whatnot that it actually pulls in as well. So. I mean, feel free to look at it and then we're at the next meeting. <laughs> necessary in order to create binaries what platform were you then thinking of targeting um i was really just wondering if you were only developing it for linux for example platform. whether oh. that might make the development cycle faster mm -hmm. um, and then once you've got it working um, to your satisfaction then obviously you can compile it for however many different platforms. I was just thinking every every time every time you want to make a small change you have to go through quite a long cycle. This would not make it a very good development tool. Yeah, I mean that's that's Android unfortunately. I mean that's sort of one of the reasons why I don't like Android because it takes forever if you want to actually even in, in an emulator if you just want to test something because the compilation takes forever. I mean with Kivi it seems to be taking even longer because it converts your um, code into something that can then be turned into a pro uh, using Scythe, they will turn it into a native application rather than a Java one. Um, but um, if you just stick with um, non Android like Linux, Mac, and Windows, then you can just use it as a Python application and just have to have it running basically in your um, in, have all the dependencies installed in your virtual environment and you can just run it and that should make the development really really quick and then once you're happy okay i think i'm good now i can start testing it on android then you can go through the pain of then actually waiting 10 minutes for a build right, where are we at here okay
downloading. All right, that's downloading a different NDK for that particular. All right. Good thing I'm on fiber. <laughs> So the Pi installer allows you to bundle things apparently as an allowance so people wouldn't have to have Python installed. Well, that could be maybe an option for um, once you're happy, you can then, oops, sorry about that. Uh, once you're happy, you can then, if it's not Android, then you can just use the Pi installer and then package it up for either Windows, Linux, or Mac easily to avoid people having to have Python installed. Right. Right, and we're getting to the KV packages. All right, it's starting to look more like we're actually doing something for Android again. All right, yeah, and we'll just let that go. Let's have a further look at um, Pi Installer. Um, hmm, interesting. Okay, so Pi Installer basically looks at all your dependencies. Um, looks at all the import statements. Um, it knows about Qt, WH, Python, Tekinta, Django. But uh, it doesn't seem to know GTK. Hmm. 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 My installer. Hmm. Right. Okay. Right, we're building once again. I think Pine Solar could be an interesting package to look at um, at another time for the uh, Python meetup. See how that goes. Hmm. I'll keep that in mind. Okay.
You can also have a look. Okay. I'm not quite sure how they created the Kiwi file. Ian, did you actually ever um, build your own Kiwi app in the end? All right, microphone was off. Um, oh. Yeah, I think when I did this about a year and a half ago, I just mm. sort of made um, just a hello world and, um, yeah. uh, you know, just very, there was some examples of getting started with Kivi or something like that. Mm. So you could drag a hello world and then you could stretch it out and the font size would change right. and things like that. You could spin it around, um, mm. <clears throat> but very little code in mm. it. Because uh, they seem to have their own sort of like language. Oh yeah, you, you can you can write things in Python, but then their language yeah. is sort of a code reducer or a shortcut. Yeah. So if you if you Make use their dot short. kv yeah. files, then it, it, it yeah. um, cuts down the amount of um, work you have to do. Plate code but, there that you have to write. Yeah. I mean, it looks a bit like that, but then once again, it's another. Another um, language to learn. Another yeah. language that you need to know. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, yeah. it seems, yeah. Looks a little bit like YAML. Mm -hmm. Is it kind of layout and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. It's like basically with the nesting and stuff. And then special. Layout and coloring and, and, yeah. and um, take your head as, you know. Yeah. A little bit of YAML, a little bit of XML, and a little bit of CSS. Yeah, it's all nicely mixed together. <laughs> like here, yeah. And a little bit of code. That's an interesting one. Okay, oh well. Right, that's still building. But I think that's at least getting somewhere now. Oh, okay. Let's deploy that. Let's start that up again on the phone. So we have a Kiwi launcher now there. That's it. So have you got an SD card in your... Yeah, so the little um, message is saying... There should be... Store applications in one of the following directories. Yeah, so... Just downloading something. No, no, you need to um, copy things over. Yeah, use your file manager and just um, create a, a kiv in your SD card, create a Kivi file. 
kan vi uh, få dig. Ja. Det er sådan en top-level directory. Ja. Uh, Lower case. Du sagde den her SD-card? Ja. Yeah. Okay. Oh. And then, um, yeah. okay. And then, then now, now you want to. I was, I was meaning sort of open up, um, you know, yeah. your file manager on your PC, and it should. Because you oh, want to. You, oh, okay. You just want to copy it across. Yeah, into that folder. So. Yeah. Um. So like the touch tracer, for instance. Yeah, but don't. <laughs> Do them, do them, Just don't bring one. it across. No uh, bin directory. Yeah, and, and there's a hidden dot, dot buildozer there. You yeah, don't bring. Don't do that. <laughs> That's a good yeah. point. Uh, so you'll need to maybe create a, um, a touch tracer folder and then bring it across. All right. Oops, not that one. Okay, go back there. But no, it's actually not on the SD card, it's on the internal one. Let's go back. That's actually on the internal, not on the external. Here we go. Yeah, it has to be on the internal one. Oh, and then, oops, sorry. Ah, cool. Yeah. Sorry, I'll just go back. Keep it launcher. So after copying on the internal one, you can see it here now. I found the touch trace, and I can start it there. And then draw with three, four fingers. Cool. Yeah. I wonder whether you can hear the drunken neighbor here through my microphone <laughs> oh, shouting outside. Um, cool, okay. That yeah. Extra so if, yeah. Yep. You, you um, could then go and edit on, on your phone the, the main.py. I think it's easier if I just go through here and edit it there. <laughs> um, yeah you can do it from your pc however you, yeah you know. but if you uh yeah okay if you edit that main.py yeah what what do you suggest for changing uh at the top put an import sys and down there was like this label text here yeah, go right down to the label text and just add something like um, sys dot version dot split bracket you know, space bracket um, square bracket one mm. uh, zero. Um, yeah, label was it text. Sys dot. Was it what sys dot? Oh, you can put it at the beginning, are you? Um, yeah. Sys dot version. Yeah. Square brackets. Um, dot split uh, yeah. parenthesis uh, double colon a uh, double quote space double quote right parenthesis square bracket zero right square bracket okay so just come up blank. with yeah splitting on the blank and and just getting the first yeah. one from it so yep. at the end of that put a square bracket yeah all right now if you if you save that main yeah i did and, and and restart the app you now should find it it's added a little bit you've been able to do it on the fly edit to your code oh yeah three eight nine cool that's the python version now oh okay so david that's probably if you want to be a little bit faster for the testing something that's probably the best way to do and only 
when you're really deploying it um, as a final APK file that you actually go through the build dozer process, or if you have nightly builds, then you can probably also go through that. Mm, that's a that's a great relief. Mm. Yeah. Definitely. You don't want to wait 10 minutes each time to find out that you had either a typo or some other problem. <laughs> yeah, that's not a fast turnaround otherwise, but yeah, cool. That's pretty good. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it, what we had sort of like planned in having a go at. Um, I'll convert the other notes that Ian had and put them on our GitHub repo as well and add a few more links then. Um, and, but this would be the end of the presentation for tonight. Um, we can still have a bit of a chit chat afterwards um, about some other things, but um, before I stop, any questions? No? So Ian is the man who's been using it for some time. Um, what have you used it for, Ian? Now, I, I just experimented with this about a year and a half ago, and then I, I, I just recently saw that version 2 was out, so I thought, oh, well, there might be some bug fixes and things. So I reinstalled version 2, but that meant a, a slightly different install procedure because I had to use a virtual environment and things. So... Um, I haven't really got past what you, you've just seen. I've worked out how to install it. And then I found that um, uh, launcher, which allowed you to be able to um, sort of do on the fly changes. So I thought I'd give that a try. Um, the This um, Kivi launcher, just looking at the GitHub uh, posting, it, it seems like it, it, it um, it may not be a, a, a very well supported project, so um, I don't I don't know how stable it is and things like that. Mm. Yeah, I mean that will be interesting to determine whether more complex applications can be handled by that as well. I mean, if um, like with the um, Python uh, for Android, where it converts certain libraries and whatnot, where it's actually aware of like NumPy and so on. To properly convert them into native libraries i mean there's quite a bit of involved but i guess if you have pure python um, um, applications then it won't be a problem um, they will definitely work then and i mean it was i mean this is an old s7 um, so there was speedy enough at least and there was no real lag or anything and behaved quite well so i was actually impressed by that Ooh. All right, in that case, I'm going to stop the recording. Thank you, guys. <laughs>